God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. Today I'll be reading Psalm 12 and 13, King James Version, Expository Study Bible. Um, notes included, in my opinion, the best study Bible ever. I encourage you to get this Bible, this study Bible. It will be the greatest thing you ever bought in your life for a fact. I strongly encourage you to. It will be a blessing to you, help you with the word of Almighty God. And I would just encourage you to make that purchase. It will be a blessing. All right. So as always, we ask God in the mighty name of Jesus for the revelation of this word and that it would be hidden in our hearts so we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and him crucified. We need it. All right. So in Psalms, as always, everything's a type of Christ. Everything's a type of Israel. And so... We have David and the king trying to kill him. So we see types of Christ. And also we see a foreshadowing of the future. So as this is happening in the present, it is also a glimpse into the future. With David being Israel and the king being the Antichrist. So we see this play out. And what I just said is mind blowing. It really is. God is so awesome. He's so I there's just no words to give God justice of how awesome he is. Now, as I just said, think about this. Here's David with the king trying to kill him. And this is happening. In real time. And at the same time. This is a glimpse. Of what is going to happen. In the future. With anti with the Antichrist in Israel. So. As this is going on in real time. It is also. Showing you in the future. What's going to happen in real time. That is just. I mean. Think about that. That's just. God is able to do all things, for he is God, right? All right, Psalm 12. The righteous are delivered. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. This psalm as well was probably written during the time of persecution by Saul. Violence and falsehood are Satan's two greatest weapons against the servants of God. The violence of the false Messiah is the theme in this previous chapter. With falsehood being the theme in this chapter. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Whenever the Bible is displaced by human teaching, a logical result is that a righteous man will be persecuted. The Lord shall cut off all the flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things. All who do not believe the word of God will ultimately be cut off. Who have said with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over it? Us. In the great tribulation when Antichrist prevails. False teachers will abound. They will boast that they are their own masters. Controlled by no God of the heavens. They will say that their lips are their own. That their teaching or originates with themselves. For the oppression of the poor. Israel. For the saying, for the saying of the needy. Israel. Now will I arise, says the Lord. I will set him in safety from who, who puffs at him. Speaks of David, but more than all of the Lord's protection of Israel in the coming tribulation. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. The word of God is perfectly pure. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from the generation forever. The time of the great tribulation will be Israel's greatest trial. They will be preserved by the second coming and, there, and, and thereby forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Pertains to Saul, but more than that, the Antichrist. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 13, short one. A prayer of distress and faith. How long will you forget me, O Lord? Forever, how long will you hide your face from me? 
Some think, think that this psalm was written by David during the time of Saul, with other believings that David wrote it after committing the sin concerning Bathsheba and her husband Uriah. Even though David here cries for help, the far greater picture pertains to the coming sufferings of Israel during the times of trouble, under the reign of the false Messiah. However, the ultimate portrayal is the greater David, the Lord Jesus Christ, interceding for Israel as of Israel, as Israel. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Once again, this pertains to David and also to Israel during the coming great tribulation. As well, it must be understood that these psalms are applicably to us as individuals. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God, lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Symbolized by David, this will be the prayer this will be the prayer prayed by Israel when it looks like the Antichrist will completely destroy them. Actually, you are reading the very words here which will uh, which will precipitate the second coming. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against him, and who have troubled me rejoice when I am moved. False apostles always rejoice when the true apostles suffer trouble. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Perhaps these words have written immediately after the writing of the 51st Psalm. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. The word bountifully can be translated compensated. It thus reaffirms what so often appears in the scriptures that the overcomer will be compensated both here and in the future state for all troubles and sufferings and that that and that he will learn that perfect wisdom and infinite love will permit and overrule every trial. So that's a blessed word right there, isn't it? Isn't that a blessed word where God has told us if we can if we can keep our faith in him and Jesus Christ him crucified through the tests, the trials, the tribulations. If we can cling to the faith in Jesus, if we can make it through with our faith in the Lord, we will be compensated bountifully for it. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Let me put it to you this way. Let me put it this way. Um, I'll put it to you in a human way, and hopefully that will illustrate to you how this is. So imagine, imagine that, um, imagine you're working for, let's just say you're working for, you're working for Bill Gates. You're working for, you're working for him and you work for him and, you know, you're working with the, uh, windows 11. Let's just say there's lots of problems with it. A lot of trials and tests and, just a lot of problems with it, but you're working through it. You're, you're, you're committed. You're committed to the product. You're going to see it through. No matter what is presented, you're going to get it. You're going to see it through. You're going to make it to the end until it's finished. And you do. Bill Gates says, thank you for what you've done. I'm going to compensate you. I'm going to give you $10 billion for what you have done. You've been compensated. Now, imagine that. Imagine him giving you $10 billion for compensation for what you have done. Would you be happy about that? Would you be happy to receive $10 billion? I think you would. Now, that's nothing compared to this. That is nothing compared to this. God Almighty, who is not evil, God Almighty, who's, who knows all things, able to do all things, He's going to compensate us for us making it through. So if we can keep our faith correct and we get through every test, trial, and tribulation, because that's what life is. Life is filled with test, trials, and tribulations because our faith must be exercised. Our faith must be tested. I told you before, I'll say it again. The reason why our faith is tested and trialed and tribulation that we go through is because our faith can be strengthened 
through these things. Imagine your strength. Imagine your faith when you get it, when you have faith. Imagine it's kind of puny. Imagine your faith as a man. It's it's just a little skinny little, it's a real skinny man. That's your faith. But every time you make it through a test, trial, and tribulation with your faith placed in, if you keep your faith in Jesus and crucified during test, trial, and tribulations, what's going to happen is, imagine your faith all of a sudden is gaining weight. They're gaining, they're, they're becoming muscular. And as these tests, trials, and tribulations continue to happen, and you're keeping your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified, you're passing the test, trials, and tribulations. Your faith is getting exercised. It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. All right? So imagine it like that. So that's how you build up your faith to be stronger and stronger and stronger. And also, it must be, it also separates the real from the fake. You can believe and say whatever you want to say, but the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. It's what you believe in when you're going through a test, trial, or tribulation. That is the revelation that will reveal the truth to you. When you're facing a trial or tribulation or a test, where's your faith at? Are you worried? Showing yourself that you have no faith in the Lord? Are you stressed? Showing yourself that you don't really have faith in the Lord. Are you troubled? Do you feel hopeless? Showing yourself that you really don't have faith in the Lord. So there's so many benefits to test trials and tribulations. It will reveal where our faith is, which is a blessing. If our faith is not correct, we can repent and we can get our faith back to where it should be. Put it back in Jesus, being a remembrance of what he has done for us on a continually uh, basis every day and night. All right. So there's just so many benefits to being tested and going through trials and tribulation. It may not sound like it, but it is. Remember, greater than anything that we could face on earth, God is greater than. So I don't care what financial situation is in front of you. I don't care what situation is in front of you. God is greater. Do you believe that? Do you believe God is able to do all things? Do you believe he loves you? Do you believe that he can always make a way? <clears throat> Either you do or you don't. But hopefully you do. So that is the uh, <clears throat> two books of Psalms. And, um, yeah, what a blessing. What a blessing it is. God is good. God is good. Oh, God is good. He's so good. I, I just can't even, I just, God is so good. I just don't even know what to say about it. But let me tell you, God is good. No matter what's going on in your life, remember, God is good. He is good. He is blessing you. No matter what you may think, he really is. If you're his, that is. If you're his. All right, God bless you. And any questions, don't hesitate to ask because today is the day the Lord has made. God bless you.